Cole here with another live lesson. I'd like to talk about flow and dynamics today. So, just do a little, little flowing for you. So, a lot of stuff that I uh, do is kind of a lot of triplets with ghost notes. One to three, 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 one to three. Triplet, 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 triplet. Triplet, 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 triplet. So I'm kind of constantly hearing that. right, left, back, and forth. On. So you start on the ding, right, and then you go to the rim, not the note, but the outer space. Right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. So then I'm accenting that. Every, every six, you're getting a bass and then a snare. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Bass. Snare. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Bass. Snare. Bass. Snare. Triple F. Set of notes are the ding on one and the snare on uh, the second round, the second half. Um, it would be one, I guess. So it'd be one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then every other note is a ghost note, so it's very, super soft. So you're just filling in the, the space in between. One, two, three, four, five, six. 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 You almost don't even hear the ghost notes. 
It's more for the player to help feel the groove. And then you can start mixing it up. necessarily the whole time but as long as you're still staying in that hey we have two people in here hello one's probably my wife so uh, we have you know that's how you figure it out once you get that feel then you can do whatever you want That's just one example of flowing through uh, triplets, you know, kind of how, that's my go-to feel, usually. Um, you can do uh, ghost notes in four, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be um, triplets, so ghost notes in four, if you want to do like a bass, snare, bass, snare, ding, and then the outside of the rim, not the actual note. Or you could do it on the side, but that's kind of long movement. The, le the, le the least amount of movement, the better. That's kind of how the drum set is. Right? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, so now we're going to fill in ghost notes with the left hand. Same B, right? One E and a two E. So 
now we're doing the ghost notes in four. to that you can add uh, another bass drum so now you'd be going This is the basic beat. set grooves that I teach my students on the first, uh, usually the first lesson if they're, if they're doing good, maybe the second lesson. So that's kind of, you know, basic rock beat almost applied to the ding. Filling in ghost notes in between. And you could, uh, you know, you could take, you can take that idea and uh, whatever you're doing, you can fill in ghost notes in between. It's just, it's just a... It's a really good tool to have. Um, so yeah, so we got you know the triplets. Doesn't matter what you do as long as you're staying to that. So, 
that brings me to another thing. Bass notes, right? How many people have bottom notes? They're a really great addition because you can really get nice chords. scale you have and what notes. This is a or a maelstrom. Uh, I got D, F, G, A, B flat, C, D, E, F, G, A, C, D, F, G. So there's a lot of scales within this one and, and these notes in the bottom, the low notes, really um, let me do a lot of cool different ideas. So, um, yeah, dynamics and flow, triplets, ghost notes, you know, we've talked about a lot of stuff in a short period of time. Um, another thing that I want to talk about is, is, is setting up um, kind of a, a baseline, you know, to start maybe an idea. So you figure out, especially with these low notes and the ding, you can get a nice little baseline. So here's something, uh, kind of that idea. You'll see I'll keep this going. This is called Maelstrom. So this bass line is going to go the whole entire time, no matter what I'm doing. figure it out so it's cool and when you're doing the bass uh, notes I like to put my thumb I don't kind of just have my hand floating but I actually like to anchor my thumb uh, kind of on the rim above it and that way it lets me kind of do uh, you know some more rhythmic things No. 
now because that's kind of what is happening. I'm anchoring my thumb on the top rim. Not, my hands aren't just floating, and that way it's kind of stable. So, and you could do more ryth rhythmic stuff like that. Bass notes are fun. Um, hello. So this uh, Yisha Savita Asachan here has some bass, two bass notes. So I'll, I'll demonstrate some uh, dynamics and, and flow on this. second note of the scale that's not the ding. So ding, first note, and then leaving out the second note and doing every other note sometimes, almost, almost every note, other note. Manage your scale. It can really be a nice thing. Then I'm hitting note underneath the bottom, F sharp in this case. kind of a formula that can work with a lot of hand pans is switching between, you know, if it's a, if it's a D curve, switching between the A and the B flat, uh, but not hitting them both at the same time. Um, that, uh, you know, C, this is a C and a C sharp. It's, you know, it's pretty dissonant, so you usually don't want to do uh, those at the same moment, but...
So, you know, whenever you're trying to do any kind of groove, you want to make sure you got the snare kind of consistent. Sextuplets. One fifty four six, one fifty four six. With a harmonic thrown in there on the on the second group of the one of the, the six there. It's been a it's been a hard month. Hopefully it's uh it's over soon.